We're out here at the Niles Canyon Railway Brightside Yard, and today we're going to be taking some tires off of a driving wheel for the Southern Pacific 1744, which is a mogul that was stationed in the Bay Area quite a bit on the Western Division and also on the San Joaquin Division. So we've acquired this locomotive. I think we talked about it on the channel about a year ago. And we dodged COVID, managed to get the frame and all the parts to here. And since the frame arrived in September of 2020, we've been working on it, basically assessing the condition, cleaning the frame, and starting mechanical work. So like I said, Today we're going to take the tires off. And this is a long process. We've been looking at stuff and figuring out what we were going to do. We knew some of the tires were shimmed and we had to take them off to reset shims. And the more we looked, the more we decided we were going to just take all the tires off. And rather than put the old ones back on, get brand new ones because that will give us a longer service life and none of us want to ever do this again it's a lot of work we're all volunteers we got plenty of other things to work on so when we try to do something we try to do it right the first time so we don't have to go back and do it again there's another wire right there the wheel center is one piece and then this is a separate tire that goes on the wheel center and typically these are machines so they fit onto the wheel center and there's a certain interference fit well on this engine there were issues and they had to shim between the, the wheel center and the tire because it was moving on the center so we saw these shims and they'd come out we need to get the shims back in but the more we looked at it we're we're just going to end up getting new tires and replacing the tires that way we'll have brand new tires on the locomotive so we won't have to ever do this again in our lifetimes and hopefully somebody else's lifetimes because we just don't run enough miles to need new tires so this is unusual typically the shim shouldn't be stuck out like this and then there may or may not be a shim here but here's the end of this shim that they stuck in when the tire moved so when we take the tire off we'll find out if there's a shim in there or not there probably is but we don't know and this is all stuff we found since we got the locomotive here we didn't really notice this when we were looking at it in Alamosa but it's like anytime you get into one of these projects you think you're gonna do this much work and you end up doing this much work so So we're, at this point, we're just getting the fire ring up on the tire, and we, we've we been wiring it to the wheel to hold it in place while we're heating, and then when we need the tire to drop, we can cut the wires and get the, the ring out of the way, because we don't want to smash the ring when the tire comes off. So this is your ring of fire, is what they call it, and it's got a bunch of holes in it that the gas comes out of and that basically they're nozzles for flame. So when we're ready, we'll, we'll feed propane and air into that and uh, heat the tire up. It's an interference fit between the tire and the wheel center and that's what holds the tire on. Because you expand it, you set it on and then when it cools off, it shrinks. Uh, we uh, got communication with uh, Brian Wise of a Mount Rainier, the head up there, where they've taken off tires up there. He gave us uh, some pictures and some specs that we could build this one from, and got the right diameter and had it rolled at uh, a metal fabricator. We threaded the ends and drilled holes in it, and welded up some standoffs on the thing, and here we are learning some more. When you first light off 
the propane and the heat, you'll check the tire and you'll start to see that the heat start to expand through the tire. And it's really cool to watch. And you'll see the circles get bigger and bigger and bigger. So you know that the heat is expanding through the tire. Right now, we have the tire pretty much all heated. Now it's just waiting for the tire to expand enough. We'll see that the shim will start bubbling behind the tire because there's grease and stuff behind there. And uh, to be honest with you, we've seen the tire starting to loose up a little bit and then we start swinging to get it off the hub. Well, we ran out of propane in the first tank. Uh, the tire did get loose, but it uh, cooled off again once we ran out of propane. So, once again, the tire is back solid onto the hub, so we have to heat the tire up one more time with a new tank of propane. what we were talking about typically when you shim you shim all the way around the diameter you're not supposed to have a quarter of the diameter shim and that's an issue in operation I think what happened was the tire was loose so they got as big a shim as they could in there uh, but we don't want it to be like that for our railroad for the long term We're not in an engine house, we're out here, we don't really have the right facilities like a real railroad would have, so we're lucky to have this Pettibone crane that we're using, and the forklift and everything else, we adapt with what we have on site, but it'd be a lot easier if we're in a shop with an overhead crane, nice concrete floors, um, and then, of course, like with the fire ring and stuff, that's that's something you just don't buy. You know, everybody's used to buying stuff on Amazon. Well, you don't get this stuff on Amazon. We got to kind of canvas, look for stuff, or make it ourselves. So that's something that we made up uh, as part of the process. And you know, it, most railroads that ran steam have one. If you go to Durango or you go to Jamestown. Somewhere in the engine house, you'll find one or two of these fire rings because they use them all the time. It's a fairly common process to take the tires on and off locomotives. And really, they only last, in regular service, 60,000 miles. So this is something that would happen quite often on a running locomotive. So. Right now, we just got to get the tire out from underneath the wheel which is a little tricky because the fork with the forks really aren't big enough for these 63 inch tires but we, we pull it out from underneath there and then we're going to go set it off for storage if anybody wants to buy a 63 inch tire we got a bunch of used ones we can sell you for a good price you know not a lot of people do this and i think big railroads you know, they had guys, all they did is take tires off and work on drivers. We don't have that. We're, we're learning everything from, you know, putting in tubes in, changing tires, working on crown brasses. We have to learn it all. 
So we just don't have different divisions in the steam department. What you see in guys around here, we got maybe two other guys and that's it. So yeah, we're learning as we go. You know, the fruit of our labor is to see it run. It's not gonna be today, it's not gonna be tomorrow, but eventually, once we get all the parts back on, you get to see the end result. A great steam locomotive running. And uh, we're looking forward to that. We set the driver set on top of the I-beams so that if we have to hammer on it, if we got a good solid base, if you did it hanging off the crane, it will be swinging while you're trying to hit on it. So it's a kind of a, a, a double thing that if it does teeter, the crane can still hold it and we can proceed as a safety feature. Well, a clean tire is a happy tire. Maybe one over here that was causing us issues. These drivers, we're really not sure how much they weigh at this point. We'll get a weight when we truck them, but my guess is they're eight to 10,000 pounds a piece. Um, the, the main driver, which is the number two, where the main rod connects to, that one's going to be the heaviest because it's got the bigger counterweight, it's got the valve gear, the eccentrics on it. But uh, these, these were guessing eight, 10,000 pounds. So it's not, it, you know, they're they're pretty heavy. They're hard to move around. We only have certain equipment uh, to do it, and so we've uh, figured out, I guess, with what we have, what to do to get them stood up. This is the easiest way to get the tires off. You can do it side too, but it's a lot simpler this way. The other thing we're always really conscious about because none of us do this for a living we're volunteers uh, we really look at what we're going to do and try to figure out the safest way to do it uh, we're working with heavy stuff like this driving axle you know and we're using cranes and forklifts and accidents can happen so you know we talk a lot about what we're going to do before we do it, we think about the best way to do it with the equipment we have, and uh, we just kind of have to adapt. You know, sometimes our equipment is, I mean, we have better equipment now than we did in the past, but in the old days, we were using rejects equipment too, so we had to be worried about the equipment in addition to everything else we're doing. So you see the circles of the heat expanding onto the tire as the circles get wider and wider the tire gets hotter and hotter once you see no circles then you know that it's getting complete heat all the way around we do check it uh, for heat temperature with, just to make sure everything is heated all the way around before we start tapping on the tire we need it about 250 300 degrees before it starts to slip and then we can go ahead and start pounding on it Yeah, so another thing with, with steam engines in general, there's lots of parts on them. 
This is a thrust bearing that just came off that wheel center for one of the side rods. Although they may look the same, the other side's probably got one like this. Just because they look the same, they aren't. They may be different sizes, they might be different thicknesses. Everything on the engine's custom made for where it fits. You know, over years of running, they wear and you got different wear patterns in different locations. So when we take them apart, everything gets labeled. I'll label this where it came from because this has to go back where it was or if we make a new one we need to know what size this was otherwise you get parts mismatched from side to side it can cause you problems when you do your rebuild so. hey we've got the wrong axle yeah what is it this is for sp1746 we got to return it We now have all the tires off these driving wheels. So the next step is we're gonna be setting these on a truck, which would be a semi, because they're probably 24,000 pounds or more, the three of them all together, about eight to 10,000 a piece. And then we're gonna take them up to Sacramento. Uh, California State Railroad Museum is kind enough to allow us to use their shop facilities and they have a big way there where we can put the driving wheels up we can turn the outside face of the wheels get it perfectly circular so that when we get the new tires they'll go on and they'll be a good fit uh, we're also going to do some other work up there on these axles clean up the journals and uh, work on the thrust bearings as well. So we're fortunate that the State Railroad Museum, number one, allows us to do work up there, and number two, that the facility's even there. You know, otherwise we'd be shipping these tires somewhere back east. There's only a few places that can do this size of wheel on an actual wheel lathe. Um, for driving wheels, and we got to drag up all types of arcane information, right? Because we're dealing with stuff. This locomotive was built in 1901. We're dealing with 1920s era technology. Uh, a lot of this is kind of handed down in the shop from the head guy at the shop. He would teach new shop people coming in how to do things. So there's some things that are written down, something that's all word of mouth. You know, when we get into stuff that we haven't done for, before, we usually call other people that have done it in the industry, talk to them, get ideas how to do it, and then sit down and figure out how, how to do it and what will work good for us in our facility or lack thereof. As you can see, we're out in the dirt here. So for driving wheels, the AAR, which is American Association of Railroads, that's the predecessor to the FRA, Federal Railroad Administration, had standards for the interference fits on driver tires. You know, it's hard to believe, but probably very early on in the steam locomotive development, by trial and error, they figured out, you know, if we don't have this much interference, the tire slips. So we need to make it a little more. And I'm sure they didn't calculate that. It was probably something that they came up with by trial and error over time. But for the 1744, these are 63 inch drivers, which means they're 63 inch with the tire on it. So the inside of the tire, when they machine that for the interference fit, it is 0.065 inches smaller than the diameter of the wheel. So that means the inside of the tire diameter would be 55.935 inches and the wheel center is 56. So that explains why we got to heat it up to get it off because it's actually smaller in diameter than the wheel center. Now get it back on, you have to do the same thing. You got to heat it up to 350 to 400 degrees. It'll expand about an eighth of an inch in the diameter and it'll allow you to slip it on that wheel center. 
And then once it cools off, it has that interference fit, which is what keeps the tire on the wheel. We're standing here in front of the frame of the 1744. It looks a lot different than it did when it showed up in 2020. We've dropped all the drivers and basically it's about as bare as it can get, which is really cool because you can kind of see how all the suspension works on the locomotive. Uh, you find unique things, you know, this locomotive's uh, 120 years old, so it's had a lot of hands work on it over the years, and every shop does has done different repairs to it, so you can kind of see how the railroad repaired something, and sometimes it's a temporary, sometimes it's different ways of repairing it as time progressed. So people always wonder why it takes so long to do these restorations and you know <clears throat> reality is we're all volunteers we're only out here if we're lucky a day a week and this stuff takes a lot of time everything needs to be looked at everything needs to be cleaned which involves needle gunning sanding and then everything needs to be painted and then you got to measure everything if it needs to be taken off, it needs to be marked where it was taken off from, stored somewhere. And then at some point in the process, you start putting stuff back on and then you gotta go and get all the stuff and bring it back and put it on. And one thing we found with this locomotive, which is different from the other engines that we have, most of the locomotives we operate are logging engines and they're smaller engines. This thing's a 90 ton locomotive and there's nothing on this engine that we can pick up. So we've had to learn a different mode of operation. You know what we do out here a lot of times we can move stuff around by hand. Well with this it's too heavy. Two people can't pick up the stuff so we're using forklifts and we got to use a crane and so even that takes even longer. It's a lot easier just to move the part. Well, now you got to go get a forklift to move it. So there's a lot involved, and uh, you know, being being volunteers, we don't do it every day, so you lose time doing that too. Saturday we show up. It's like, well, what would we do last week? Where you know, I wasn't here. So where did Hank put that part? You know, hopefully we talk during the week, but. Sometimes that doesn't happen, and that takes time, too. So the more hands you have, the faster stuff moves, especially with this type of work where we're cleaning and painting, and, you know, that, that's just kind of tedious work that takes time. But it's got to be done. Otherwise, you can't rebuild it correctly. This is the frame. This is only part of the locomotive. So we're moving from the frame at this point, we're gonna put all the mechanical parts back on the frame. And then at some point, we're gonna put the boiler back on the frame. And then all of a sudden, people will realize, oh, it is a locomotive. Right now, it just looks, a, I don't know, it looks like a bridge or a hunk of metal. But once you get the boiler on, it'll look a lot more like a locomotive. We've had a lot of bo boiler work done. Uh, Stathi Pappas, who I think has been on the channel as well, has done a lot of work uh, at Stockton Locomotive Works. When we move the locomotive frame and all the parts from Alamosa, we moved the boiler to Antonito to his shop. And over the last year, he's replaced all the firebox sheets, which were missing. They took them out because they needed to be replaced. Um, the previous owner had bought new sheets and had made like the rear door sheet and the tube sheet and so Stathi has got those all up in the firebox he's got them welded up the boiler now has a firebox and we're moving on to the next project with the boiler which is the stable installation and there's that's a long process there's 1500 stables of different sizes everyone needs to be threaded and then you gotta thread both sheets because it goes in, you got two sheets, firebox sheet outside of the boiler sheet. Stay bolt goes in between to keep the two sheets together. So you gotta thread both sheets and then you thread the stay bolt into the sheets. And then both sides have to be hammered over 
to help support, and it also seals it when you got water in the boiler. So just doing one stay bolt, you know, you're talking forty hours to make a stay bolt, and then you got to install it. it. It's very time consuming and expensive. So certainly you can help with donations on that part of the project. Next step on uh, working on the frame, we're going to remove all the springs so we can send them out uh, to be rebuilt and repacked. We have found that the springs are starting to crack, certain ones, so we have a large crack that will be uh, fixed, one of the leaves. Uh, like Alan was saying, on our other engines, you know, these springs on our logging engines, we could take them out. Two guys could pull the springs, no problem. These springs are so big, we're gonna use a crane and a forklift to try to get them out. Um, so that's our next project, is trying to figure out how we're gonna get these springs out, and they're tucked inside the frame. So that's our next project of, how are we gonna do this? And how are we gonna engineer to get it out? Um, one of the coolest things we found while we were disassembling the locomotive is SP Ingenuity. Uh, as you can see, there's these boiler braces to hold the boiler up. And we, it looked like this brace was having a problem holding the support. So what SP did in one of the shops is they added an old firebox boiler plate. You can still see the holes where the staples were, see the threaded stuff, and they just cut a chunk out of a firebox, riveted it onto the support bracket to give it more support. Really cool ingenuity. Because the wheels aren't under the engine right now, you can see stuff that you wouldn't see normally. So this this hole in the frame, is, the reason this is here is this where, where the driving box for one of the axles. This is the number three axle of this locomotive. So this is the rear axle. There's a big box that goes in here. There's two guides that go up against the frame. The front one's called the shoe, the back one's called the wedge. And uh, you can't really see it on the video, but this is actually a tapered surface. But anyway, that driving box fits in here. This is the suspension that goes on top of it. Um, and this is, we call this is a frame binder that holds everything together and keeps the frame tight. So to get the at driving axles out, we have to drop this binder, which weighs about 350 pounds, and then we drop the axle and the driving boxes all out, and then you get what you see here. So this is just, you know, you don't get to normally see this when the engine's running, the wheels here, you can't see any of this stuff. Here we are, we got bunch of driving boxes so these are the basically what the driving axles ride in you have a, a bronze bearing here and then this box we were looking at the frame the ears of this box would fit in between the frame and then that box sits in there and the axle can go up and down and the box goes up and down after taking everything apart the more we look at it, we got more stuff to fix. So we're going to have to do some machine work on these boxes. When we turn the axles, we're going to clean the axles up. So we're going to have to do a little cleanup on the main brass bearings. And we also noticed in Almosa the thrust bearing, which this is what takes care of the lateral side to side. On a couple of the axles, it's worn down. So we need to, these are Babbitt. We need to re it get a thicker thrust bar. So a lot more work. These things are about two foot across. Who knows, 500 pounds, you can't pick them up. And they don't fit in any of the machine tools we have. So this is something we're going to have to send out for machining. Just another opportunity if anybody wants to help us with the project to help donate some money. We're going to be spending a bunch of money on these driving boxes, repairing them and getting them back to the proper condition for operation to put under the locomotive. Now that we got it apart as far as we got it apart, we need to do all the work now. So we're going to get, take care of those and 
once the tires are back on the drivers, all the parts will go back together and we'll put them back under the frame and then it'll be back on its wheels again. We could always take more volunteers in the steam department or any department uh, at Niles Canyon Railway. Uh, we have openings at the train station, in the track department, car department, locomotives, diesel locomotives, uh, steam department. You can always come out. Uh, we're learning this stuff as well. Uh, just because we've been here a long time, we are learning different techniques. I'm working on the steam locomotive and um, you can learn with us as well. Uh, we want to share our knowledge. The steam department and the knowledge that we have is a dying art and we are out here to show you what we know so we can keep everything going and we're not going to do this forever and we hope we can keep everything running with this knowledge for the next generation and the next generation so that's why we're out here to enjoy working on the equipment working with other people and sharing knowledge just to close we uh really are happy to get the opportunity to show you guys what we're doing out here on the 1744 and how the project's progressing. For more information on the Niles Canyon Railway, you can go to our website. It's www.ncry.org. Uh, you can find all types of stuff, how to volunteer, when we run trains, what, what we do. We have a whole section on our collection. You can look up about our equipment and then there's also links to other websites we have website for the steam department that kind of goes through all our locomotives that we've rebuilt and operate as well as there's a section for the 1744 which we update regularly with pictures as the work progresses and then there's a there's websites for the Krauss Mafia there's websites for some of the cars so um, that's a really good resource, and you can learn a lot about the organization going to our website. We appreciate your uh, watching, and hopefully you learn something, and maybe next time we have another update, you'll learn some more about the SP-1744 in Niles Canyon.